someone in there with you. Right, I'll get them myself then. No, you won't, Mrs Biggs. Oh, <laughs> look at you. Somebody must have wanted to take a real poke at you. Thank you to mind your own business, Mrs Biggs. Nice woman, that. had a sleepless night, haven't you? Something on your mind. My husband used to rip up the sheets something terrible when he was alive. Mind you, that was mostly to get at me. It's all he ever thought about, really, me. And his whippets. That's what killed him in the end. Taking them for a run after a night of amour with me. Terrible about Mr. Scullion, isn't it? Big black eye out to here. A right pearler. Not before time either. That's what I says to him. Somebody must have wanted to take a real poke at you. This is big, so I'd like to take a real poke at you. What's that you said? Nothing. Bag's full. You can't get any suction when the bag's full. <laughs> Mr. Zipser, are you all right? I'm not myself. Uh, fearful things are happening. You ought to see a doctor. Do you often get took queer? Certainly not. I was only asking. Had a young man once, just like you, got took queer every now and then. He threw himself about and wriggled something oh. terrible. It took all oh. my weight to hold him down, it did. I'll get you some cocoa. There you are, Godber. Non-specific urethritis has reached epidemic proportions among school leavers. Is it, my dear? I've been thinking about Lady Mary Hall. It must be co-educational, Godber. Women are constantly being disadvantaged in the ancient universities. Jill Tweedy says so. That could be going a little too far too soon. I've just spent an hour studying the college accounts. 
As far as I can understand, this college is about a million pounds into the red. How can that possibly be? I've no idea, but I certainly intend to find out. This college is not going to be a sinecure. Well, that's why you turned down the Bahamas. Nonetheless, Godber, it's your duty to make Lady Mary Hall a co-educational establishment. Women are just as cheap as men. Must, must, must. Duty, duty, duty. What did you say, Godber? I said I must call the Bertha about the accounts. It's my duty. I did meet one promising student last night. A Mr. Zipser. You must look out for him. You, Mr. Zipser. Yes, Mr. Scully. Um, I had to come and say sorry. What do you mean, sorry? I'm sorry I hit you last night. Huh? What makes you think that you hit me? Well, anyway, uh, I'm sorry. You thought I was going to report you, didn't you? But I ain't. Got away, you see. You can't catch them, you can't report them. That's the custom that's been handed down. So just count yourself lucky. No, I was worried you might be hurt. Me? Hurt? It's a little hurt matter. I don't understand. I oh, know you don't, Mr. Zipser. Ah, Mr. Jimmingham, key to the boathouse. Ah, please. Well, anyway, I'm sorry. You would understand if he was a gentleman. A beastly little swat. Hmm. No, Scullion. My father told me a rather interesting story about you. Oh, yes, I remember him so now. He, he was a gentleman. He told me that you got him through Tripos without him ever having to sit the papers. I think he was having you on, Mr. Jimmy. Oh, come on, Scullion. Now, look, you know me. Been busy rowing. Drinking and wenching. So how do they expect me to pass history, huh? Mm. I mean, it's all nonsense. You never learn anything from a book. Try opening one, Mr. Jimmy. Not much fun, is it? I'd rather be a scullion scholar. Haven't done that for some time, Mr. Jimmingham. Oh, yeah, after a nice little third. No, scullion. I'm going into offshore banking. That's uh, more an upper second. He's a very good research student for that, sir. Would. Uh, 500 concentrate the mind? Oh. And the same again for the nerd. <clears throat> There's only one here who can do that in history, and he's just left. Zip, sir. Mm, beggars can't be choosers, Mr. Jimmingham. He gets you a nice little second. Oh, come on. He wouldn't do it for me. There's no need for him to know too much, Mr. Jimmingham. There are ways in which these things can be, um, <clears throat> fixed. Don't forget the keys to the boathouse, Mr. Jimmingham. Keep your eye away from the keyhole, Scullion. Thank you very much, sir. Come. Professor Siblington, I have an appointment to discuss my thesis with you. Really? Come in. Shut the door. Sit down. Move the door, What is the subject of your thesis? Uh, Pompernickel as a factor in the politics of 16th century Westphalia. I couldn't supervise that. I greatly doubt if it was. What? I greatly doubt if Pompernickel was a factor in what you said it was a factor in. Professor Siblington, you gave me the topic. You've been supervising it for two years. Two boring, victimised, neglected years. Then you'd better show me a portion of your endeavours. I gave you three chapters a month ago. Must be in all that rubbish over there. I trust you kept a copy. No, I didn't. Well, it's the first thing I always tell my students if I see them, which I rarely do. Always keep a copy. What could hardly be responsible for the accumulated detritus of the second year? What? It's lost, isn't it? Two years of work. Stop whining, man. Sit down and have a bun. You seem overwrought to me. 
Finding research too much of a strain? Or is it more personal? How did you know? It always is. Why God gave us genitals, I cannot imagine. It's a great distraction to scholarship. I've become obsessed. Madly obsessed with my better. I don't do sex, young man. Just theses. I think you'd better go and have tea with my friend the chaplain. If I can rouse him. You know, I wanted your advice. The Prime Minister was asking me only the other day where to find a first-rate economic mind to sit on a commission on university cuts. I did say, most indiscreetly, I hear there's a first-rate bursar at Porterhouse. Did you, Master? You're not offended, then. <laughs> of course, I do realise, with all your college duties... One is always pleased to serve one's country. Good. Uh, water or soda? Uh, water, please. Well, you must come to lunch, and we'll discuss it. Uh, to business. To business. I meant college business. Oh. Now do sit down. I must say, coming back to Porterhouse, many things depress me. The atavism of some fellows, the animalism of some undergraduates, the college results. All those thirds and suspicious-looking ego taps. Oh, well, we don't claim to be an intellectual college. It's always said that the reason Porterhouse produced no Russian spies was that none of the fellows knew where Russia was. <laughs> but why choose such appalling candidates? Why not pick good scholars? Well, there are one or two obstacles. The senior tutor? Not just he. I mean, our dependence on endowment subscriptions. I never heard of them. Very few have. One or two of the fellows. And, of course, the parents of our less academically gifted undergraduates. Do you mean we take these useless youths in exchange for concealed donations? But... That's tantamount to selling degrees for bribes. I'd say identical. But without these bribes, donations, Porterhouse, in a nutshell, is broke. But why? I mean, what do other colleges do? We're not like other colleges. They're some of Britain's biggest landowners and shareholders. King's had Lord Keynes as bursar. We had Lord Fitzherbert, the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo. That's his portrait looking down on you. But if he broke the bank... It was our bank he broke, the East Anglian Lowland. Bet all its assets, our assets, on the turn of a wheel. Did he blow his brains out on the spot? No. We had no choice but to elect him master. After an enormous meal, he died upstairs in bed at 80 of... A porterhouse blue. All he left us with were a few acres of swamp in Radnorshire and a terrace of houses in Ryder Street, occupied rent-free in perpetuity by the college servants. I counted the college servants at last night's feast. The number was totally excessive. Well, evidently, there is room for retrenchment. And if we enlarge the college, our services will become far more economical. All the more reason for the new building. But how would we raise the money? An appeal, Bursa. I have some very rich friends in the city. But, Master, won't they want to see the college accounts? Ah. I mean, what if this secret endowment fund were to become generally known? Mr. Scullion, I want a meeting of College Council this evening at nine. You can't do that, Master. The College Council meets on the first Thursday of the month. Nevertheless, Mr. Scullion, this evening at nine. Nasty eye there, Scullion. Yes, sir. Slipped on the path. Got away, did he? Yes, sir. Good for him. Anything else to report? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Master's called a meeting for College Council, nine o'clock tonight. Has he indeed? Then perhaps we'll find out what he's up to. It's 
This college council meets first Thursday on the month, sir. It's always been the way in Poultry House. Yes, Scullion will now. We have a master who does not know all our ways yet. <laughs> Bursa went to see him this morning, sir. Yes, I did know that, Scullion. I sent him. Bit of a slippery sod, if you ask me, sir. Begging your pardon. Got no bottom, as Lord Woodford would have said. The Bursa's bottom is not your business, Scullion. Is that all? Well, his uh, chef is. Chef? What's the matter with him? Well, it's all the servants, sir. Very upset about the master's speech. Wondering what he's going to do next, you know, or what will happen to him. Tell chef there'll be no changes. The master was just feeling his way. He'll learn. Yes, sir. Thank you, Scullion. Very nasty speech, that was, sir. Yes, Scullion. Sir Cathcart Diaf wouldn't have liked it, sir, would he? No, indeed, he'd be appalled. He wouldn't like to see the college going to the dog, sir, would he? Everything is all right, Scullion. Now go. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Done your eye. Oh. Been in the wars? Yes, sir. Nice bit of flesh. This? Oh, that. Look mm. at this, sir. Mm. Past it, poor bugger. Tough titty, you're for cat meat. Well, what do you want, you old bugger? Racing tips, not a usual day. <coughs> it's rather a private matter, sir. Bog off, eh, figures? See the sundowners. Got to have a word with old Scully in here. What's the matter? It's, uh, that the new master, sir. Oh, canting hypocrite, ain't he? Yeah. We're in college together, you know. Butcher's boy, we called him. Trumpin' arse then, trumpin' arse now. Only got where he did was he married money and a title. What's he done now? It's, uh, he's changing the college, sir. Ah. He wants to fill it with scholars. I had my way. I'd kick every scholar out and put in some athletes. Yes. Run the place properly. Yes. Tell you what, Scullion. Fruit of experience. A man can learn more between the thighs of a good woman than in any college. Ain't I right? I wouldn't really know about that, sir. Hmm. Well, what did you really come for, you old bugger? It's not for me, sir. It's for the college. Mm. You've got influence, you and all the other old Portacusians. If they knew how he was destroying the college, they'd soon put a stop to it, wouldn't they, sir? You were touching faith, Scullion. But we'll deal with that tithead. Tell the dean my role's outside the college gates, 1,800 hours tomorrow. Knew you would, sir. Yeah. Thanks, sir. You put this on peculiar practice. Yeah. New market, 40 to 1 in the 3.30. Yeah. And, uh... Scullion, yes, sir. you did right to tell me. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Ask Cook to give you a cup of tea before you leave. Thank you, sir. Uh, teapot, tea cosy, sugar basin, spoons, uh, milk jug. You do take milk, do you? Yes. What? Yes. Ah, good. 
So many people take lemon these days, especially the Chinese. Oh, yes. <laughs> now then, toasting fork, crumpets, butter, salt, no, not salt. Uh, there's your crumpet, boy, you toast them. I will sit down by the fire and you can tell me your little problems. Professor Siblington spoke to me of it, but I didn't catch much. I'm deaf, you know. I know. What? I know. Yeah. Now, nothing you say can possibly shock me. I've been solacing young men all my life. It's terribly embarrassing. Yeah, but you'll have to speak up. Just a minute, I've got a useful thing in me here that I use for confessions. Now, tell me your problems. Everything will be treated in the strictest confidence. Now, what is all this about? Self-abuse? It's not self-abuse. It's not self-abuse! I've developed a terrible fixation on my bed. Oh, good. It's more than a hideous urge. Won't you push it against me? Who is it? Well, Bloody old zipser. When she squeezes the bag of the Hoover. <laughs> oh, it's as if I'm driven by a demon. I feel I have to take hold of her. Because that's a... Don't despair, young man. There is a simple answer. Oh, pairs, language students. Remember what Robert Brock said, there is some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. <laughs> Find yourself a nice French girl, or a Swede. Southern Europeans tend to hair in the centre. <laughs> and one piece of advice I always give my men, never conjugate without a protective. Nine o'clock, Mr. Scullion. Yes. Time for college council, Walter. Right now, you take charge here. If anyone calls, you just say, Mr. Scullion stepped out for a bit. Are we finally here? Where's the chaplain? He's coming. Now, gentlemen, please remember, this is our chance to preserve college. We must stay firm, stand united. Here you are, five minutes late already. Perhaps this is one reason why the college affairs are in such chaos. I believe I left them in very good order. Master, may I point out this meeting is not constitutional? No agenda has been issued. May we cut the absurd preliminaries and get on? inspected the college accounts. I've called you together to inform you that, not to put too fine a point on it, Porterhouse is bankrupt. The suggestion is absurd. Not at all, Dean. The figures are here. The bursar can confirm them. Now, gentlemen, will you sit down? 
My task must be to put matters right at once. So here are three proposals to be implemented immediately. Proposals may be put only in writing at three days' notice. Standing orders stated quite clearly. Exemplum have been. Gentlemen, there is only one rule for committees. Cut the cackle and get on with the business. Proposal oh, one. Will you chatter later? I have to leave in 15 minutes. Unlike you, I am a busy man. Proposal one, eliminate waste. This costly practice of dining in hall will be abolished. We'll replace it with a self-service canteen run by an outside caterer. Self-service? No outside caterer could sustain the gastronomic standard of Porterhouse High Table. It's world famous. High Table is divisive and will be abolished. High and Table is a very too. fundamental feature of college life. <laughs> Proposal two, improve academic standards. I gather they've fallen considerably since 1939. I understand there was a particularly poor intake of fellows that year. I came in 1939. Exactly. Henceforth, Porterhouse will admit candidates on academic merit and that alone. That poses insuperable problems. If that is your resignation, Senor Tutor, I accept it. This will require We therefore begin an appeal immediately. That would totally change the character of college. The character of the college, Dean, is bankruptcy, financial and otherwise. In any case, we need it for proposal three. Admission of women. Women? Women? In Porter! <laughs> Heard that. Heard it. Splendid <laughs> idea. Voting the unhygienic. Lady Mary insists as a matter of justice, and I am forced to agree. You may be, but many of us are here precisely in order not to be forced to agree with women. Come on, Dean. Come on. Oh, dear, Dean, not a porterhouse blue, I trust. It's a bit fail. Believe me, Dean, these people <laughs> dare transform the college. At, you might say, a stroke. Poor taste, poor taste. Now, may I count on your full support? I, for one, am adamantly opposed. Doubtless, I speak for the Dean. And I, too. Chaplin? The sugar in mine, please. Bursa? Well, I agree the position is desperate. What? But I accept the sense of the meeting. <sighs> Quite what I expected. Then I have but one course. I resign as master of Porterhouse. He's going. <laughs> the bucket's going. <laughs> oh. Well, of course, we shall miss you, master. But not much. However, let me tell you how I shall proceed. My letter will go tomorrow explaining my reasons to the Prime Minister. What are your reasons, Master? I must protect my own position. I must make it clear that I cannot be master of a college that takes unqualified candidates in exchange for bribes under the guise of an endowment fund. I cannot be party to a major academic scandal. Uh, I know nothing of any bribes. Oh, yes, I, I have the facts and figures here, ready to send to the Prime Minister, who will doubtless pass them on to the university. Merci. To continue your discussion, gentlemen, if you should wish to accept my proposals totally unconditionally, I can see you for five minutes after lunch tomorrow. Thank you, gentlemen. Good evening. He's beaten. The fucker's beaten. And that, I believe, is what is popularly known as getting us over a barrel. What are these bribes? I blame you, Bursa. You told him about the endowment subscriptions. You told me to make the disastrous financial position of the college quite clear. Oh, yes, yes Bursa, you supply siding monetarist. Ah. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we must not become divided. That is precisely what he wants. I well, 
Well, Mr. Simpson, you don't usually get up this early. Yes. It's only seven. I thought you didn't come to late. You know me, love. I can come any time I want to. <laughs> you must be feeling better then. Yes. Yes, I am. Blessed Mac. Here, love. Be a gent. Give us a hand. No. It's stuck around the front, love. Ooh, I say, I say, Mr. Zips, are you quite sure? I always thought you were a nice boy, but... Oh! 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 Sorry, Mrs. Biggs, I've got to go to breakfast. Uh, Mr. Zipser! Could you spare a moment, sir? Oh, uh, what is it? <clears throat> well, just a little matter that might interest you, sir. Something that might help you with your research, you might say. Oh, uh, well, I've got an urgent appointment. I've got to find somebody. Uh, we'll later do. Yes, later will do, Mr. Zipser. Later will do. Are you a student here? Hey? Are, are you a foreign student at the language school? My name is Monica. I am 19. I'm from Sweden. I'm here in Cambridge to learn very good English. You speak it very well. <laughs> Actually, I, I'm a language expert myself. Um, how about some extra tuition? Hey? Okay. Uh, extra tuition. Uh, smorgasbord. Uh, you and me. My name is Monica. I am 19. I go in there to learn more English. When do you finish? Uh, six half past p.m. <laughs> I'll see you after then. See you after. Yes, yeah, see you after. See you after. See you after. <laughs> <laughs> All yours, sir. Yes, thank you. Scarf, sir. <laughs> thank you. Well, what can we do you for? Um, just a trim. What about the shampoo and sin, sir? Very good for the hair. Uh, no, thank you. Just a trim. With the university, are we, sir? Yes, that's right. Get a lot of academics here. One gentleman comes three times a week. Very famous Don. Says he gets all his best ideas in my chair. Really? Tell me something. Yes, sir? Do you have any protection? Are you threatening me? No, no. I mean gentlemen's protectives. You know, Johnny's. I'd like five packets. Oh, yeah. Five. No. I've got a Catholic landlord. Won't let me stock them. Mind you, there's no money in French letters. Now they've got those dispensing machines in every gent in town. Is that so? That's enough, thank you. Well, we've already started. That's perfect. It's just how I want it.
be out in a minute. Same. You sure, sir? Quite sure, sir. And you seem to have had a heavy lunchtime session already. Been on a romantic quest. Oh. Machining the toilet. You know. What about it? It's empty. It's utterly empty. Well, it's always empty. I fill it up, blokes like you empty it. Well, it's, it's got my money in it. Oh, yeah? How do I know it's your money? How do I know you're not just trying it on? I can't try it on. I haven't got it yet. Look, why don't you try the suppliers? They guarantee complete satisfaction. My word, that's marvellous. Very good service. Yeah, they're just down the road. How very convenient. <laughs> well, mind how you go. I will. I always take every precaution. from the public house up the road um, and the thingy dispenser's empty. It's run right out. The anchor? Very well, sir. Hang on a moment. Yeah. Anchor, anchor. There we go. That's it. Four gross. That's quite a lot. That should keep you going, eh? Right, it's usual owner. Is it? Fine. Okay. Sign here. Sign? Really? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Hello? Me again? Come on, we're closed. But, but I want the precautions. What did you get along? Enough to drink already, haven't you? Well, that certainly is true. In a body like this, is it really necessary? Doesn't it look obsequious? He wants humble pie, he shall get humble pie. The important thing is to show him we're of one mind. Don't you agree, Batam? Oh, absolutely. A black day in the history of college. Look at it. Beautiful in its ancient glory. It will remain so. 
Supposing he refuses to withdraw his resignation, insists on publishing his accusation. We won't argue with him, just tell him what he wants to hear. Remember, gentlemen, all we're doing is buying time. Trust? So, gentlemen, I see you are all here. I can grant you a second. Well, you have something important to tell me? Yes, Master, we have. To Paraste, Ellen. We have thought about our last meeting, reconsidered our opposition, and would like you to remain Master of Porter House. Well, well, well. And that vote of confidence is supported by all of you? Without exception. So, you accept without reservation my three proposals. College economies, qualified scholars, female undergraduates. Naturally, we have some private reservations. But in the interest of college... We the accept them all unreservedly. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I shall consider what you tell me and let you know my decision at the next college council. Shall we say, uh, same time next week? College Council meets on the first... Uh, uh, ideal, Master. You will now withdraw your resignation? And your letter to the Prime Minister? I will give you my decision then, when you have proved your continued goodwill. Thank you, gentlemen. Merci, Hélène. <laughs> the man's determined to abuse us. Never fear, Prilector. He'll rule the day he'll become master of Porter House. How extraordinary. Isn't that young Zip, sir? What is all that? Presumably the fruits of his researches. Come here, sir. Me, sir? Yes, you, sir. What's the matter with you? You drunk? A pissed as a fart, but ready to perform. <laughs> How <laughs> dare you? You're gated for a week. Do you understand me? Gated? I'm afraid not. Oh, I found that foreigner. What a goer, are right? <laughs> You are completely <laughs> confined to college. You will report to me every night and every morning. If you commit any other misdemeanors of any kind, you will be sent down. Oh, no, but I got them like you told me. The protectives. Go to your room at once, sir. That is the kind of young man the master intends to fill college with. Victory, Mary, the reform of Porterhouse, the advancement of learning. The coming of women. Just so. You know, the fellows really crawl to me, Mary. I think you could say I've got them by the shortened curlies. I sometimes think the odour of the butcher's shop clings to you still. But do be careful, Gobber. That dean is very devious. Oh, he's an arrogant bigot and a Neanderthal, with all the persistence of bigotry and all the cunning of ignorance. But the others are coming round. I think I have the bursar already. Creepy little man. Let's have him to lunch on Friday. Invite him if you must. I'm off to the Samaritans. Remember, they're probably only buying time. Mr. Bismuth, there's your parcel. 
Come on, there you go. It's just handle with care. Ah! Oh! Mum, mind you go out there, sir, because it's very slippery tonight. That's... There you are, Mr. Scullion, on duty at last. I sent several messages asking you to come and see me. I take it they arrived. Oh, yes, Master. Then why didn't you come? Well, I've been rather busy, sir. What with the servants being rather unsettled just now? You know, worrying about their jobs. Mr. Scullion. <coughs> Scullion, sir. Am I or am I not master of Porterhouse? <laughs> so I understand, sir. So your first duty is to me, isn't it? Your second to the college servants. At the risk of being impertinent, sir, I do think I know my duties. I haven't been here 45 years. That's longer than anyone. Longer than the dean, the prelector, anyone. In fact, I remember when you were still just an undergraduate, sir. Yes, and you were rude then, but I'm not talking about ancient history. And we have traditions that go back long before you or me. A way of doing things. I've served seven masters before you, sir. I respected them. And they respected me. You won't be here much longer if you take that tone with me. The way it ain't right to change things. They'll change whether you like it or not. The fellows now recognize that and you'll do the same or go. Now take that to the bursa. And it goes now, not later. Is that clear, Mr. Scullion? Yes, sir. Not Mr. Scullion. Scullion, sir. As you would know. He was a gentleman. Oh. 